for more information or to get your equipment ready for the ride, call Rick City Bicycles at 352-369-9400. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this beautiful Monday morning. A bird just flew into our window, fell to the ground, and looked like it was suffering somehow. A customer, a customer here at the mall, picked it up on the wood. He brought it somewhere. I know Robin went to get help for the bird. I guess when the help arrives, there will be no bird to help. Uh, Jake Smith is on the phone. He is the editor of several national award-winning bi-monthly magazines. He's a columnist for Outdoor Magazine, one of my favorites. He's a dog trainer, which is kind of cool. I have a hard time just training my own dog. He's a coach for children's youth baseball teams, and he's written a book. It's called Wish. The uh, subtitle is An Impossible Dream, An Extraordinary Journey, and it's described as a fictional novel with a mission uh, to raise awareness for bone marrow donation. As you know, those who listen all the time, every morning we speak to the folks from Life South, Galen Unold specifically, uh, and he encourages not only um, blood donations, but also registering for the bone marrow registry. Uh, Robin and I both registered for that, have never been called... um, And I think as we approach 60, I think there's some kind of a cutoff date, so we may never be called. Um, But still, it's a wonderful thing to participate in when you hear the the success stories of people who've had their lives saved by other people who've signed up for the Bone Marrow Registry. It's an amazing thing that we are able to do. Uh, Jake Smith, good morning, Jake. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you guys? Pretty good. Where are you right now? I am in northern Michigan. Okay. Well, and I did promise that Robin would be part of this interview. She will, I promise, but she went to go get <laughs> she went to go get help for this bird that crashed into our window and so she's not here right now. Uh, so how how's the weather up in northern Michigan? Oh, you had to ask, didn't you? It's uh, it's, uh I sent my daughter to sent my daughter to school with a hat and gloves today and we actually had snow on Saturday. No way. Oh wow. Yeah. Now is that the part that we call the Upper Peninsula? Uh, no, we're a couple hours south of that. Um, I'm, you know, if if you you did the old Michigan mitten hand thing, right, right, right. And we're we're over by the pinky. So, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> that helps. That helps. Uh, so, so tell me about the book. Wish it. It says here it's fiction. Is it a, a is it a, a story for children or for young readers? Um, it. I, I would say probably over twelve. Um, but but mostly it is an adult novel. Um, just. But, more from the standpoint because it does uh, deal with some difficult topics, um, but I have read it to my kids, and um, you know it's, it's never too early for them to start uh, seeing that uh, you know there are people who who do need help, and uh, and that that they can be just as involved in in raising awareness for things like the bone marrow registry. Okay, well I'm I'm so looking forward to hearing more about the story, but let me just uh, Robin is is now back with us, and Robin you don't know, but a customer picked up the bird and brought it somewhere. Oh. Okay, because I, I, Lewis is on his way to... Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. you're, you're in on a little story happening here, Jake. As okay. <laughs> <laughs> we broadcast from the local mall, by the way, oh, just gosh. so you know. Okay. Okay, so now give us a thumbnail sketch of the story, and we'll kind of take it from there. What's the story Wish about? Who's it about? Okay, Wish is about a young father who gets this sort of this once-in-a-lifetime experience of being uh, the opportunity to play in one Major League Baseball game. And unfortunately, this this unbelievable experience comes uh, at the time when his nine-year-old son is dealing with relapsed leukemia. And so this opportunity comes about because the boy, when he's in the hospital, he gets visited by a professional baseball player, and he doesn't a lot of kids would would make a wish maybe for a bat or to sort of hang out with the athlete for a little while but but this boy uh, makes a selfless wish and he wants to see his dad play in one game and so it it sort of presents a pretty painful decision for the father because in order to do this in order to to try to make his son's wish come true he has to leave during his son's treatment and you know he doesn't know what 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 could be the last few weeks of his life oh wow what a Gosh, you've already got us wanting to read the book. (laughs) Is is it based on anything that you went through in real life? 
It is not. Um, I have I have had some some people ask me if it you know if it autobiographical and and it is not. Um, I have I have three healthy healthy kids and thank God right. Yeah, and but but you know, seeing people go through this, seeing parents do this, I have a I'm, I'm a I'm a worry wart parent to begin with, and couple that with an overactive imagination, and it's uh, it's really easy to imagine. Um, dealing with this in your own child and so i i wanted to bring awareness to to the the cancer battle more from the parents perspective okay so i'm guessing that all of the questions that i have <laughs> probably are better left unasked because this is a novel after all and we don't want to ruin the reading experience for the readers <laughs> so you gave us enough of a movie trailer type of a tease that that we'll, we'll be reading the story um, so, so, so this, I mean, this is a fascinating thought uh, that, that, I mean, so anybody who has a wish in spite of their own circumstances for somebody else, that's an outstanding person. It is. And, and, you know, it's especially children who have been dealing with, now the, the way I have the boy, um, in the book, he has dealt with this pretty much his whole life. He was first diagnosed when he was five. And then they thought they had it in remission, and, and then it is relapsed. So his experience is, you know, tests and procedures and hospitals and, and all of that. And, uh, you know, the only thing that the dads ever wanted to do really is just sort of play catch with his, with his son. And so they, they bond over baseball and that the, the father was a, he was a standout player himself uh, in college. He sort of walked away to just start a life and, and have a family. Um, the boy has never been able to play, and so his love of baseball comes with statistics and numbers, and so mm -hmm. they're able to to carry on those dis carry on those discussions. So, um, you know, he sort of has the, the boy has always seen that you know his dad sort of gave up that dream of of playing in the majors, and that's why he uh, he made that wish. And you had to really uh, take care when you interviewed all the people that you interviewed to uh, find out their personal experiences before you could write the book. That must have been extremely emotional for you. It, it was. And, and I did it, you know, there was a lot of online research, a lot of, um, uh, of be the match .org, um, the org, the place where people can go to join the registry. They have some amazing stories and amazing videos. Um, and then I, I got to know a couple of families especially well, and uh, both during and after the writing process. Um, one family uh, whose daughter survived uh, leukemia, and another one who they, they lost their daughter in, in high school. And both of them were they were um, they were very very moved by by the book, and and both expressed how accurate it was from the from the uh, from their perspective. Um, I, I was very hesitant in, in letting them read the final manuscript because I didn't want to bring back a lot of bad memories. Yeah, but, bad. Yeah, um, yeah. But by the but by the same token, they were very appreciative and um, and and very very appreciative of what my wife and I are trying to do with supporting children's hospitals and the Bulmer Registry. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, Robin and I both uh, are registered as bone marrow donors, but I think there was something that changed. I don't know if it's a national law or if, or a state, but we're almost 60, and I think 60 is mm -hmm. the cutoff time. I'm, I'm, I think it is, too. Yeah. 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 And I don't know why. Uh, I feel pretty healthy, except for my cold. <laughs> but but, 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 but the, the idea that, you know, it's hard. Okay, every single morning, just so you know, we speak to a representative from one of the local blood banks. It's called Life South. And every single morning, his job is to get on the air with us and, and to remind us, every, everybody, the listeners and everything, that donating blood is necessary. Otherwise, we won't have a blood supply. And then once in a while, we'll mention also about the bone marrow registry and, and the, the organ donor registry. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get people to donate blood. It's harder to get people to register for the bone marrow registry. And Robin and I did it. It was nothing to it. It was a cotton swab thing, and, and mm -hmm. we were done. You know, it, I, I believe it used to be a blood draw. When I, when I joined um, quite a few years ago, it, it was a blood draw. But, yeah, now it's just, a, it's just a cheek swab, and I believe you can even order the kit and have it delivered right to your home, too. Did you, have you ever been called as a donor? I have not. I, I, that's one of those things that's... Uh, Boy, that, that certainly would be uh, just a, a, a wonderful experience to be able to share with someone. Can you imagine? I mean, and, and that's the thing. I mean, when that's the, the, here's the thing. I've never, I'm tr trying to think of if I'm going to make a mistake here, but I think I don't know anybody who's actually been called. Mm -hmm. and, and that shows you how 
important it is that everybody signs up because it's so rare to find a match. It is. It is. And, and a couple of statistics from Be The Match um, is that uh, every four minutes someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer like leukemia and that of the people who are looking for a bone marrow match, 70% of them have to look outside of their family. So it's just that just shows how important it is that those who are able to join the registry and donate, um, that they do so. And because you're so in tune now with the needs of others, while you, while you coach the um, young ones in uh, their baseball teams and everything, do you have sort of a sense of something that might be going on in the personal life of a particular child you coach? It uh, might not be leukemia or anything like that, but maybe you're able to be in tune with their emotions and help them get on track emotionally? Uh, a l- yeah, I would say a little bit. Um, it, I, I coach a lot of youth basketball, too. Um, uh, this year, my, my baseball coaching is taking a little bit of a backseat with the book, so I'm just sort of the, the helpful parent this year. Um, but it, it has made me be, sort of be on the lookout for those types of, types of things. Um, but then also try to, you know, the, the, the child is on the, if, if a child is sick um, or dealing, whether, whether it's an illness or dealing just with either stress or difficulties at home, a lot of times getting on the field or getting on the court, that's, that's their time to escape. That's their time to yeah, right. get it to learn something new, and so when I coach, I always try to, I I would like to develop their skills, of course, but it's also about just, you know, forget everything else for a little while, and let's just have fun, let's play a game, let's learn more about a, a game that they like, and maybe learn some things that you don't get just by either watching it on TV or, or reading it, but by actually doing it. And when you can help a child develop yeah, right. their skills, even if you just have a little bit of success during that practice, um, boy, their, their, their face just lights up, and, and they just they want to learn more, and it just you can see either pressures or stress, even if it's just dealing with tests and schoolwork, you can see it just kind of kind of evaporate. Wow, you must be a great dad. I can just feel it. <laughs> I, I can just hear it in your, your voice. You, you are, your, your children have, are lucky to have you uh, as a dad. Jake, I want to ask you something about the writing part of this. You obviously work with words. I mean, you're the editor of a few magazines. You're a columnist. Mm-hmm. This is your first novel, though, right, Wish? It is. It okay. Is. So as a guy who, for, in your very living, you have to be very picky about what gets put into, the, into print and, and very selective. And you... So did were you, and this is more of a writing question than anything else, but, mm-hmm. but did you find yourself as you were writing, like, editing simultaneously? <laughs> like, oh, don't put that in there. That'll never fly. Let me oh, re- boy, you have no idea. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Um, it's, it's weird because in my, in, with the magazines, I'm sort of in the position of judging manuscripts um, and helping writers. Yeah. With the novel, I was the writer, and in working with an agent and a publisher, um, it, the, the, the shoe was on the other foot, so to speak. Um, but I think having my position at the magazines allowed me to be more receptive to their critiques and their edits because that's what I turn around and do. Oh, with really? <laughs> um, and I was surprised, though, because, um, well, actually, I, I was more grateful than anything because I learned so much. And even though I had, you know, I, I had been with the magazines for over a dozen years, um, Writing fiction is is very different, and um, I was I learned a lot both from my agent and uh, the publisher. Um, just little mechanical mechanical things and, and little writing ticks that you don't even know you fall into until somebody points them out, and then you look at your stuff and you go, "Oh wow, boy, I've been doing that for a long time." So. I'm a little anxious to kind of start working on the second book because <laughs> I think I'll be able to uh, eliminate a lot of those things right on the front end this time. Oh, okay. Is the second book in any way connected to the first? Um, not, uh, it's not a sequel or anything, but I am hoping f- um, to develop something um, in, in sort of the same genre, very family-centric, um, inspirational and uplifting, but also hopefully calling attention to um, two ways that people can make a difference. Um, and you know, uh, my publisher likes to call it fiction with a mission, and uh, it's 
it, it's kind of a I would be I'd be very happy to write in that sort of genre all the time. Well, and just just to give you some insight as to what we do and how we make our decisions. Usually, when we are pitched a book, a we have to kind of fall in love with the idea, whoever is pitching it to us. In your case, it was a publicist named Nancy, um, who we've worked with a lot, as a matter of fact. But but there's also this thought, well, if it's a novel, we don't want to talk too much about it because obviously the whole point of reading a novel is to, is to have a story unfold that you don't already know the story. Right. Uh, in your case, we decided for a, a longer interview than we normally would have granted to a novelist, not because we don't like novelists, but because we want, <laughs> but because we want to keep that, you know, that sacred you know, element of a novel, uh, you know, sacred mm-hmm. or secret or whatever. Um, but in your case, you have obviously, a, and you, you said it right, uh, it's fiction with a mission. So that's kind of why. And, and the bone marrow thing is something we've only talked about during our blood donation segment. So this is good. Okay. Do you enjoy writing from the first person? Do you think that's more, d- does that have a more powerful impact than uh, someone just, you know, being in the current present day and then thinking back to what once was and write it from that perspective? Well, I, I wrote Wish from the father's perspective. Um, it's, not, it's not in first person, but it is entirely from his point of view, so we don't see things. He's in every scene. Um, I... You know, I, I've never really um, devoted a lot of time to writing in first person, um, in that present, uh, first person, present tense. Um, I have read some things that uh, I either really, really like it in that in that form, or I have difficulty following it along. <laughs> um, so, so I've I've always wanted to. Uh, I've, I've I have always felt personally I like to write a lot of. Um, in, in addition to the dialogue, I like to let, write a lot of vivid descriptions. And I've always felt that um, maintaining that first-person point of view can be difficult because even all of the descriptive parts need to be in a, I guess, form of dialogue, a form of internal dialogue. And uh, so keeping it in a third person allows, allows me to just sort of write as I like to write and then keep the dialogue as the dialogue. Were, were there any characters in Wish that presented more of a challenge to you than the others? And, and, uh, and a good example, just to maybe illustrate what I'm trying to say here, is that a lot of times we'll speak to a male author, and he'll have a female character, and he's not really quite sure if a woman would react the way he believed, so he'd have to go get a, a lady friend. What do you think? You know? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> what, do you think right. I'm right here? I mean, did you have anything like that where the, some of the characters were maybe coming from a point that you really didn't have a reference point in your own life? Well, just to speak real, real quickly about the about the female character, um, my my wife is my first reader, and uh, I pretty much wrote my wife. Um, she's a very strong character, uh, very supportive, very motivational, and uh, that's my wife to a T. She has been my just oh, okay. my absolute <laughs> rock for all of this. So she was pretty easy to write, actually. Is she the mother um, of the boy? Even 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 cracking the whip too, and everything. So um, <laughs> both on my writing and uh, and how and how uh, Emily the 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 wife does in the book um okay the the children um there's both the boy and his little sister are sort of a a combination of my three kids um and that's just based on conversations we have a lot of that dialogue i would say the the harder perspectives were were some of the professional athletes um and more from the standpoint of because the message in here or because the 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 plot in here and and this this guy is dealing with cancer and his child it was difficult for me for some of the characters who had to sort of force him to step away from his family if he need if he needed he needed to concentrate on baseball uh-huh, uh-huh. and so those moments where other characters had to confront him and say look you're not a father right now you're not a husband you have to be a ball player that was hard for me um, because you can't. It, that's something you can't just turn off. He had to learn how to manage it. Um, oh wow! So, so but, you kind uh, of revealed that part because that was a question. Did he? Did he go for it? <laughs> I guess well, he goes it, for it. <laughs> there, there's a lot. There's you know. There's a lot of tension um, as he's 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 trying to make this wish come true, but it's not a given. Oh, you do have uh. to have a lot of uh, comic relief, though, for something this serious. Uh, did you were, were you able to draw on some funny moments in your life to 
put the uh, reader at ease and, and, to, and to get a few laughs during the book? I, I, certainly, I certainly tried, and, and as I'm reading it to my kids, they're, they're laughing at all the right parts, which is very encouraging. And uh, so there was a lot of dialogue with the, with the children and the way they talk, their mannerisms, um, uh, that is a little peek into my daily life. Um, and then some of, the, some of the mishaps during baseball I can, I can attest to maybe coming from some personal experience <laughs> <laughs> in, some, in some of the bloopers, I guess. So uh, I, that was, uh, yeah, that, that was pretty accurate. <laughs> uh, Jake Smith is our guest. He's, uh, he's got a load, load of credentials, but this is actually his first book, uh, first novel anyway. It's called Wish, An Impossible Dream, An Extraordinary Journey. And it is about a young child who has, f- uh, forgive me, what, what's the child's condition again? Uh, he has uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Okay, no wonder I couldn't remember <laughs> leukemia. A L L. And his wish, that, his wish is for his dad to play prof- uh, mm-hmm. at least one game of uh, uh, professional baseball. What team is he going to play with? Uh, the Detroit Tigers. Okay, <laughs> of course. Oh, there yep. you go. Yep. Go Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, diehard Tigers fans. <laughs> yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah, Robin's question about the comedy. I was wondering that too. This, this just seems like a natural. For a movie maker, my my reluctance, if I were in your shoes, Jake, with that, my goodness, you got to get a good one because, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if you'd be excited about the notion of a filmmaker coming up to you or not, but, I mean, what if it was some, you know, incompetent filmmaker? <laughs> I think I, I think it's, it'd, be, it'd be a great film for a good filmmaker, but I would I would be so worried that they would ruin it. I don't know. Well, some of the the you know all of the the major baseball movies, um, the the ones that really. Our, I'm drawn to are the one where the actors you can just tell they're ball players, and uh, that level of accuracy um, is w- would be very important to me, I guess. Yeah, you got to hold. You got to be strong. You get maybe put your wife in charge of this one. No, <laughs> you're not going to be doing this one. <laughs> I've looked at your movies; they're not, they're not the quality we're looking for. Uh, what one of the other things you're doing uh, for community and also for your family is that you're allowing people to follow their dreams. I mean, they all might have a day job that they need to have to put food on the table and have a, a really nice life, but you're also encouraging the children to have other interests other than just one particular one, that they, they do need to follow their dreams, even if their day job makes more money than their dream does. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's been very nice having that. Um, I but it, uh, you know, it, it, it all goes back to the responsibility, I guess, that, that we all have, and especially when we have a family depending on us, um, to, you know, there, there are things you want to do and things you need to do, and it, is, uh, it takes determination and per- perseverance in order to do both. <laughs> and you need to, you know, sort of not be lazy. You need to be active, um, and if those dreams are really worth really worth going after and something you're passionate about, then uh, you have to make the time to pursue them at the same time that you are, you know, helping uphold the responsibilities that you have, not only to yourself, but to those who depend on you. Well, you know, it's, well it's, it's, it's interesting how a work of art, in this case, a work of, of literature, uh, could actually elevate our c- collective awareness of, of the importance of certain things. I mean, in this case, it would be bone marrow uh, registry. The children's hospitals in general will probably benefit from this. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and of course, just will be entertained as, as well as, as touched. I think, uh, boy, I think you've had a home run, not to use a baseball <laughs> pun, but well, I, th- you. I think you do, Jake. It sounds wonderful. Uh, un- unfortunately, we don't have a copy of the book, so I, I can't give one away right now. I know our listeners were waiting for me to say that, but I didn't get one. Uh, so I'll have to go buy one like the rest of you. Uh, Jake, how do we get the book? Well, you can, uh, you can visit my website, and that's it's pretty easy. It's just jakesmithbooks.com, and there will be links to all the online retailers, and it's in stores. Um, I, and, I, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm around on the social media pages, too, on, on Twitter and Facebook, and uh, uh, all those links are available. All right. Well, I'll, I'll make sure you're my friend or whatever you do on Facebook. I'll, I'll click whatever <laughs> I need you. to click and, and stay in touch with you. Jake Smith Books, plural, because he is going to be having another book soon. I think this That's is a, right. new, a new path for you, Jake. Uh, what, what a great conversation. Thank you for being on the air with us today. Good luck with everything, and come back with the next book. 
Well, thanks so much, Larry and Robin. I certainly had a great time. For those who missed it, the book is called Wish, An Impossible Dream, An Extraordinary Journey. Jake Smith spells his name exactly as it sounds. The website again, Jake Smith Books. Thank you, Jake. Thank you for being on with us today. Take care. Have a great day. All right. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. A huge credit and debit card data breach over the holidays last year has caused a top executive at Target his job. CEO Greg Steinoffel has resigned five months after he asked consumers for patience. It's a time like this that really defines companies.